on the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj's prayers are, are now finished and Lord Nisringadeva is replying to Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj is at this time he's a young child and he's very gentle and Lord Nasringadeva appreciates appreciates this quality in him. To be gentle is a quality of somebody in the mode of goodness. And Prahlad Maharaj Prahlad Maharaj symbolizes the mode of goodness. In Bhagavad Gita, uh, in, in fifth chapter, Lord Krishna says, Vidyavinaya Sampani Brahmani Govi Hustini. Suni Chaiva Swapaki Cha Pandita Samadashana. Uh, Lord Krishna is describing the vision of Paramatma, how one sees Paramatma everywhere. And Lord Krishna says, Vidya Vinaya, he describes the Brahman as being learned and gentle. So to be gentle is a quality, an important quality. It's one a quality which we should acquire. If we're not gentle, we should become gentle. We should become kind and compassionate and gentle and not harsh in our dealings with others. Sometimes as devotees we can become very much influenced by passion and ignorance. We become very rough and we argue and fight. But these kind of qualities don't give good credit to the devotee. To be harsh and rough and quarrel and argue, fighting, these are symptoms of the mode of passion and ignorance and these are symptoms of the demonic nature. We know that in the Kali Yuga, the devotee and the demon are in the same body. Devotee and the demon are in residing in the same body. Someone may be some one minute they're a nice devotee, and next minute they're very nasty and they show the demonic nature. When Jagai and Madhai attacked Lord Nityananda and hit him on the head with a wine pot, Lord Chaitanya was very angry and he came, he was going to kill them. And 
But Lord Nityananda restrained, he stopped Lord Chaitanya and he told him, he said, in the, in the Kali Yuga you must be very merciful. We know in, in, in the Treta Yuga, Lord Ramachandra killed many Rakshasas. He went into the forest, into the jungles, and he took his bow and arrows and he killed many Rakshasas. And then Lord Krishna in Dwapara Yuga, he used his Sudarshan Chakra to kill many demonic kings. But in the Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nichananda converted all the demons and made them into devotees. So the devotee and the demon nature are both there within the same person. It's just like you may keep two, two dogs at home and one dog is very fierce and the other dog may be very gentle. So we have to be careful which dog you nourish because if you nourish that fierce dog then it will become more and more fierce, more and more ferocious and give more and more trouble. So we have to nourish the gentle nature, we have to cultivate the, the gentle nature, the nature of the devotee. And we do that, we can do that by proper methods of living and acting. Just like a devotee lifestyle, they will take bath two or three times a day and they wake up early in the morning and chant mantra Hare Krishna. They have a regulated lifestyle centered around the service of Lord Krishna. So when we use when we engage ourselves like that regularly every day it has a very purifying effect on our consciousness. And the sign that we're becoming purified means that we become less influenced by passion and ignorance. And we become more uh, we're more attached to the service of Lord Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the demoniac nature. He says in chapter 16, Lord Krishna said, Pavritim cha navritim cha jana na vidur asura. Lord Krishna is saying the demons, they don't know what to do and what they shouldn't do. So 
Just like before becoming a devotee, one may smoke cigarettes, one may drink beer, one may gamble, do all kinds of bad habits. But after one becomes a devotee, then one will not take part, one will not take part in any of these things. Even people will come and offer alcohol and cigarettes, the devotee will, will not take them. We see the example of Haridas Thakur, that a prostitute woman, a prostitute lady came tried to, and tried to seduce him. But Haridas Thakur just told her, he said, Oh, I'm busy just now, I have to chant the holy name. He told her, you wait, and she waited and she heard him chanting. So this went on for two days and nights. The second night, the prostitute also started to chant and she became a devotee. So this is the nature of a devotee, that they're very careful to avoid sinful activity. A devotee should display good qualities. We should be we should be free of passion and ignorance. So Prahlad Maharaj was born in a demonic family, but still he's very gentle, he's not a demon. So Lord Nasringadev said, I'm very pleased with you. And Lord Nasringadev tells Prahlad, you are the best in the family of the demons. Hmm. And Lord Nasringadev said, it's my pastime to fulfill the desires of all, pe all the people. So Lord Nasringadev tells Prahlad Maharaj, I want you to ask for some benediction from me and I'll be happy to, to give you your, your wish. So, Lord Nasringadev, like Lord Krishna, they're very affectionate, they're very kind to devotees. And they always want to please the devotees and try to fulfill the desires of the devotees. They like to give service, they don't like to take service. We, in the material world, we like people to serve us, we like to take service, but in the spiritual world, the greatest pleasure comes in giving service. So, 
Right? The more we become Krishna conscious, the more we want to serve. So, the, the constitutional position of everyone is to be a servant of Krishna. So, it's not surprising when Lord Nasringadev offered this benediction to Prahlad. He wants Prahlad to ask something, he wants to give something to Prahlad. Whatever Prahlad wants, Lord Nasringadev is ready to give him. Actually, the, the personality of Godhead fulfills everyone's desires. Because Krishna is in everyone's heart, he knows what everyone wants. So if Prahlad wants something, Lord Nishringadev will be happy to give it to him. And Prahlad may want to give something for someone else. He may want a benediction for someone else, not just not for himself, but for someone else. So Lord Nasringadev would be willing to do that also. So if we get the blessings of a devotee, then we can also get the blessings of the Supreme Lord. So we always want to try to please the desire of our spiritual master. So in this Krishna consciousness movement, we all want to try to please Srila Prabhupada, who is the founder Acharya. Srila Prabhupada liked to see the, the devotees all happy in Krishna consciousness. He did not like to see the devotees quarreling and arguing with each other. Prabhupada would say, if the devotees are all arguing and quarreling with each other, this is the neophyte tendency. And sometimes he would say, this is the influence of the age of Kali, that the personality of Kali has entered into your midst. The symptom of the age of Kali is not only sinful activities, but it's also arguing and quarreling with each other. We're not able to work together, we cannot cooperate with each other. So when we cannot work together, then we cannot, we'll never be able to attract new people into our movement. So, 
People are not working together, they all have bitter feelings towards e each other. It creates a very bad atmosphere and will not attract interested people to enter. So we have to be very careful to guard against this tendency. We have to want to please the spiritual teachers. We have to know what is the desire of the spiritual teachers. Actually, the desire of the spiritual teacher is to see everyone develop in their Krishna consciousness. We have to develop a taste for the chanting of the holy name and for hearing the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Sometimes we see devotees, uh, they, they like very much to beat the drum, but they don't chant. They just beat the drum, they never sing. And they never chant on their japa beats. They hardly ever chant on the beats. So how can they develop the taste for Krishna consciousness if they're not following the process? Krishna consciousness is in everyone's heart, but it has to be awakened by hearing. So we have to hear very carefully from the mouth of the spiritual teachers. Srila Prabhupada said, I never asked my Guru Maharaj any questions except one. I only had one question for him. Prabhupada asked his guru, how can I serve you? So his spiritual master told him, he said, you're, you're good in English language, you should use English to preach. So Srila Prabhupada thought deeply about how he could preach. He began the magazine Back to Godhead, printing his newspaper in English. Then he, someone told him that, Swamiji, you're, you're printing newspapers, why don't you print a book? They said, you're printing newspapers, but these new newspapers, they get thrown away, they get lost. But if you print a book, then people will keep the book. It will be more useful. So Srila Prabhupada thought about this and he thought this is good advice and he then he began to print Srimad Bhagavatam. 
दमेल का गुंबद सुधार हुआ है रा यहाँ पर साड़ी माने यीशु में आगे पंच अपना सुनो and he printed the first three volumes, the first, the whole first canto, he printed it here in India. So Prabhupada saw how the influence of Kali Yuga could affect the minds of the devotees and degrade them. But he knew that if they do a few, if they do a proper program of hearing and chanting, then they can be free from this tendency to quarrel and argue. So Srila Prabhupada was enthusiastic to write the books and he wrote his Bhagavatam and he got it printed and put it in the libraries and then he, when he had the chance he would lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada understood that if the message of the Srimad Bhagavatam was preached, it could purify the hearts of all the people. In the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a beautiful verse which describes Kaler dosha nide rajan astihe ko mahat guna kirtana deva krishna shya mukta sangha param brajat. That the Kali Yuga is an, an age of faults, a lot of faults in the Kali Yuga. But simply by doing kirtan, one can cross over the ocean of the age of Kali. So, kirtan is not just only with Madanga and Kartals, but it's preaching the glories of the Supreme Lord. So, it was the desire of Srila Prabhupada that we would all work together to preach Krishna consciousness to every town and village. It is stated in the Chaitanya Bhag in the Chaitanya Charitamrita it's described the desire of Lord Chaitanya. Priti viti achi yat nagoro digram sarvatra prachar hai be mora nam that the holy name will be chanted in every town and village all over the planet. Right. They say nagar adigram. Nagar, Adi, Nagar is a town and Adi, the Gram is the villages. And so everywhere, every town and village, the holy name would be, pre would be preached and chanted. Lord Chaitanya made the prediction that in the future it's going to happen. And all the people of the world are going to take part in the chanting. The Chinese will come and chant and dance. 
and the Russians will come and chant and dance and the Africans will come and they'll all join together. All the different people, different colored skin, different colored eyes, different heights, they'll all be one, they'll all be united in the Krishna consciousness movement. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami describes how all these different races can all be delivered. Kirita, Hunandra, Palinda, Pukisha, Abira, Shumba, Yavano, Koshodaya, Yenye, Chapapa, Yadapashraya, Shraya, Shujanditas, Mai, Prabhavishnave, Nama. Sukadeva Goswami describes different races of sinful people. Yeah, he says Kirita means the Africans. Hunandra means the Europeans. Then Pulinda, all different races from around the planet. They're all sinful. Nepalis are also sinful because they take birth here in this material world. Everyone who takes a birth in this material world is sinful. Of course, some are more sinful than others. But they can all be delivered by the mercy of the devotees of the Lord. We just have to be willing to give the mercy, to distribute it to them. So this was the desire of Lord Chaitanya and Srila Prabhupada took up that mission. Although Srila Prabhupada was in the elderly age, 70, he still went to America to preach. And he did not have money, he did not know people, but still he went. He was not thinking about his own self. He was thinking about the desire of Lord Chaitanya and the desire of his own Guru. So devotee wants to give service to others and he, he wants to especially give service to his authorities, to the superiors. And if one can give just a little bit of service for the spiritual authorities, then it can be a great blessing for us. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Gos, uh, Sutta Goswami is speaking to the sages of Naimasharanya. Naimasharanya sages had put questions to Sutta Goswami and Sutta Goswami is answering. Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, 
And so they wanted to know, like, what is the essence of the Vedic scriptures? And they wanted to know, now that Lord Krishna has left the world, where are the religious principles to be found? So Sutta Goswami was describing to them the Krishna conscious philosophy. And he told them, if somebody does not... He told them what to do if somebody does not like to hear. We know, we know people in the Kali Yuga, they're not very good hearers. They don't like to hear. They want to watch movies. They sit and watch movies for hours. But if they have to hear a Bhagavatam lecture, oh, they can't do it. Yeah, the, the Kali Yuga people, they're very fallen. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hey, Hare Bow. Hare Bow. Go. Hare Krishna. Sorry, my computer was down in power. I had to recharge. All right, so we were speaking about 
the desire of the spiritual master. We have to make that desire of the spiritual master that our life and soul, the most important thing in our life. We want to get the mercy of Krishna, we get the mercy of Krishna through the spiritual master. Problem is we don't hear carefully. So how can we develop the desire to hear better? We have to do more service. As we do service, we will purify our heart and we will hear better. The best service we can do for Krishna and, and, the, and Prabhupada is to distribute his teachings. So we are distributing, we give great importance to distributing books. There's many people on the planet, they still don't know about Krishna consciousness. They never got a book. And there, we have the Bhagavad Gita printed in many languages of the world. So I know in Burma there's many different kinds of people. You've got Nepali, you've got Tamil people, you've got Sindhi people, you've got Chinese people, so many different races. We have to try to meet them, we have to try to introduce Krishna consciousness to them. It's not easy. We know Prabhupada worked very hard to distribute Krishna consciousness in America. So Prabhupada gave Krishna consciousness in the Western country to people who were not Hindu. Prabhupada didn't see any difference. He didn't think who's qualified or who's not qualified. He went everywhere and he would preach everywhere to everyone. Human life is very special. It's an opportunity to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Just look at Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj is born in the most demoniac family. His, his father was such a big demon. And his whole, the, all the family were demons. They're from the family of demons. Mm -hmm. 
demons means the mode of passion and ignorance. But Prahlad Maharaj, although he was born in the family of demons, he was a devotee. How did he become such a great devotee? Well, one reason was he was he got the mercy of Narada Muni. While he was still in the womb of the mother, his mother was in Narada Muni's ashram, and Narada Muni was speaking the scriptures to him. So when he took birth, he's already a great devotee. But it's not necessary that we have to just preach to the children in the womb. We don't have to just only preach to children in the womb. We can preach to the children who are out of the womb. We have to we have to give Krishna consciousness to these young people, to to the the children, and from the beginning of life. We have to educate them in Krishna consciousness. Prahlad Maharaj said to his school friends, because Prahlad was in the Gurukula, but the Gurukula for the demons. So Prahlad Maharaj said, Kumara Charit Pragno Dharmam Bhagavatam Iha. When one is Kumar, Kumar means five year old boy. From the age of five, they should learn about Bhagavat Dharma. If, the, if from the early age, if children are trained in Krishna consciousness, then they can grow up to be good devotees. It's our duty to bring up our children that they will also become Krishna conscious. In, in the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, do not become a mother or father unless you can deliver your children from birth and death. So it's a great responsibility. We're all, we all take responsibility. We don't want to be like Dhritarashtra, attached to the home. In the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says, in the time of Lord Krishna, there was only one Dhritarashtra, but today there's Dhritarashtra in every home. Dhritarashtra was blind materially and also blind spiritually. So, how to open the eyes of these blind people 
We have to open their eyes with knowledge, let them hear this teaching of Krishna consciousness. How to get them to hear? Sometimes they don't want to hear. You have to, you have to engage them first then in some service. Let them do some service for Krishna. Try to get everyone to come and join the Sankirtan party and chant and dance. And after chanting, after chanting and dancing, let them take prasadam. This is Lord Chaitanya's program, chanting and dancing and prasadam. So even though the world is in a tense situation with so much virus everywhere, but still we can do kirtan, you can chant the holy name, you can dance. So we ask everyone, think seriously how to become more Krishna conscious. How can I please Śrīla Prabhupāda? This will make my life successful. Okay, any questions? Do you? Hare Krishna, Dhanabad Pranam. Hare Krishna, Dhanabad Pranams. Hare Krishna, Guruji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Parji, Mali, Sonda, Kuri, Goni, Ava, Ava, Amile, Adere, Tira, Dekhin, Jaina, Amile, Ki, Chan, Jab, Bani, Bhagwan, Sanga, Mangu, Zor, Gini, Chana, Bhagwan, Aki, Chan, Jan, Radhi, Nun, Jab, Bani. Tar, Phir, Agu, Dira, Bhagwan, Le, Palat, Maharaj, Lai, Durva, Maharaj, Lai, Ki, Phir, Bhagwan, Le, Sonda, Bhagwan, Ki, Chan, Jati, Mere, Bana, Bande, Ho, Do, Kasari, Bunni, Bani, Ni, Kasari, Bunni, Bani, Kuri. Well, you could think maybe the Lord is testing these devotees. He wants to show the nature of these pure devotees that even when they're offered benedictions, they're not interested. If we are offered the chance of a benediction, we have many things we want. We have a big list, oh, give me this, give me that. You know, we, we have so many desires. But these pure devotees, they, they don't have any desires. At least no material desire. So that's the nature of devotion, pure devotion, that they, 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 they simply want for the 
if they have any desire, it's simply for the service of Krishna. It's not nothing for sense gratification. Of course, Dhruva Maharaj, he went in the beginning, he had material desire, but he became purified. Right. Dhruva Maharaj in the beginning he was very angry and he had big he was he wanted revenge, he wanted to get a kingdom greater than his father, greater even than his grandfather. And so he met Narada Muni, and Narada Muni gave him, gave him some instructions about how he could do sadhana. And so the result was that within six months, Dhruva Maharaj was able to meet God. Right. The Lord personally appeared to Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was doing his austerities in the forest there in Vrindavan, and the Supreme Lord came there on the back of Garuda. So when the Lord saw, when Dhruva Maharaj saw the Supreme Lord, he was so satisfied, he didn't want anything. But the Lord told him that, no, you wanted something, now you have to take it. And he, he told Dhruva Maharaj, you have to go to the Dhruva Loka planet, the pole star planet. You have to go and live there. So Dhruva Maharaj, he, he regretted a little that he had asked for something because after he'd actually seen the Lord, he understood he didn't want anything material. So you have to be very careful what we desire. Because when we get something material, we might regret it. Mm. <laughs> material desires will keep us in the material world. And we have to take birth again and again to meet all, to fulfill these different desires. So we learn from these, these great devotees how we should control our mind and we shouldn't be, allow our mind to keep a lot of material desires. Just like Gajendra, the elephant, Gajendra the elephant, you know, he was fighting with the crocodile and he was suffering, the crocodile was, was biting his leg and wouldn't let go of his leg and he was in a lot of pain. Right. 
अनेकों वर्षों से हमने उन्हें जाने भाई और अपने गजेंद्र को पुटाले में जो बड़ी थी so Gajendra prayed to the Lord and the Lord came and he killed the crocodile. But Gajendra regretted, he said, oh, I, you killed the crocodile. That crocodile got liberated. I wish you'd killed me, I could have got liberated. I have to be this elephant. I'm in this elephant body. It's so much trouble. It's such a big problem to be an elephant. So Gajendra regretted, he just prayed only to get free of the crocodile. But, but he, he, he said, I hate this elephant body, I want to get free of this body. We have two elephants here in Mayapur. They're big. So these elephants, you know, people come and they look at them. And of course, the elephant body is so different from everybody else. You could imagine how it must be so difficult to be in the elephant body. Everybody comes and looks at you and they may want to touch you. And, oh, yeah. And you're in that elephant body. Would you like to be an elephant? Who would who would like to be an elephant? Oh, it's not a very good birth. So you have to be very careful about taking another body, take another birth in the material world, it can be very dangerous. But if you're a great devotee like Prahlad Maharaj or Uddhava, Uddhava prayed, he said, I want to be a blade of grass in Vrindavan. He said, if I can be a blade of grass, then when the gopis walk, I'll get the dust from their feet. So that will be the greatest mercy. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhaktivinoda Thakur prayed, he said, let me become a dog, but let it be in the home of a Vaishnava. Of course, the, the Vaishnava is not going to let the dog in the house, but if he has a dog, he'll keep it in the yard, he'll keep it outside. But if he's, if he's in, in the care, under the care of a Vaishnava a devotee, then from the devotee he will get prasadam, and you'll hear the chanting of the holy name. And if you ha have to take another birth again, 
just like uh, Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, he was in the Himalayas and he was doing his spiritual practice there, but somehow he got attached to a deer and he took his next birth as a deer. He had been he had been living alone in the Himalayas and he'd saved the life of a little deer and he became very affectionate, very attached to that deer. And then one day when he was in the, in the mountains, he fell somewhere and he died and he, he thought of the deer, next life he became a deer in the Himalayas. But because, because he'd been already quite advanced in spiritual practice, he could remember his previous life. So he felt very bad that previously he'd been a great yogi, a very advanced yogi, and now he'd got the body of an animal. So although he was in the animal body, he was very careful to always go where the, the different great sages and yogis were and somehow he'd get some of the remnants of their food and quickly, quickly he gave up the animal body. Animals don't have very long lives compared to humans. So he get, gave up that body. Next life he took birth in a Brahmana family. So birth in a Brahmana family is an advantage. It's an advantage because from the beginning of life you get some spiritual education. But it's also a disadvantage because people, when they're born in Brahmana families, they have a feeling that they're better than other people. And they become conditioned to being happy and having knowledge. They think they're superior to other people, other, other classes of people. Actually, in the Kali Yuga, there are no real Brahmanas. Everyone is like a Sudra or lower by birth. We have to be elevated by spiritual birth, by the second birth. Right? Everyone, you have to get this initiation, spiritual initiation is very important. It's the second birth, it qualifies us for spiritual practice. Right? 
यसरी आध्यात्मिक मार्गमा हामीले दीक्षित भएर हाम्रो दोस्रो जन्म सुन्नुहुन्छ र यसरी यो आध्यात्मिक मार्गमा दीक्षित हुन अत्यन्तै जरुरी छ Everyone has got a mother and father of the body. You have a mother and father. Give, mother gives birth to you, father, the, the wife of the mother. So we have that. But only the, every, every living entity has that. Even the dogs, even the birds and the fish, they all have a mother and father. But only the fortunate person gets the spiritual teacher. Then by the grace of the spiritual teacher, then you can get the mercy of Krishna. The spiritual master has a connection to Krishna. So we get the mercy of the spiritual master, we can get the mercy of Krishna. So very important to get this connection with the spiritual teacher and to please, to fulfill the desire of the spiritual teacher. So this is called devotional service, bhakti yoga, serving the pure devotees, the service to Krishna. The spiritual master is not Krishna, but he is the representative of Krishna. And whatever service you offer to him, he will offer to Krishna. And so it's not that the spiritual master needs anything from you, but we need to serve Krishna. Krishna is giving us so much. Krishna is providing, he is maintaining everyone. He is the one, he is the one Supreme Lord and he provides the needs of all the living entities. Right? The food, the water, the air. Everything comes from Krishna. We are taking everything from Krishna and we are not thanking Him. We are meant to do yajna, we are meant to perform sacrifice to repay Krishna. And the proper sacrifice we are supposed to do Harinam Sankirtan. This is the, the proper yajna in the Kali Yuga. All the other yajnas are not much effective, but the Harinam Sankirtan, that is the real yajna. So you may be one person, you can do the yajna, you can chant the holy name yourself. Yeah. 
but you can also join with others. If you can get other people to also join with you, together you can all chant the holy name. The louder you chant, the more powerful it becomes. So, the family which chants together, they will stay together. So, Hemalata Thakarani, are you doing kirtan at home? Are you having kirtan with your son? Yes, Guru Maharaj, we do uh, Gaurarti. We do Gaurarti every day? Yes. Really? Is your husband with you? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. How long have you been back in Burma? Uh, we don't know yet. Are you in Burma now? No, in Krabi. Oh, you're still in Krabi? Oh, okay. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam. Prabhuji, my question is, Prabhuji, my question is, Maharaj has told me about the truth. Prahlad Maharaj has always been in the same way. But I don't know if you hear the truth, but I don't know if you hear the truth. I don't know if you hear <laughs> Prabhuji asking that Maharaj had said that Pralat Maharaj was always in Satogun, in mode of, in mode of goodness. But we have learned from, from many sources that Sutta Bhakta is always transcendental to mode of material modes. So, how can we understand? Yes, Prahlad Maharaj is in the mode of pure goodness, no influence of passion and ignorance. So that's the mode of goodness, it's pure goodness, there's, not, not, there's no passion and no ignorance. No, Prahlad Maharaj, as far as we are concerned, we are influenced by the modes. We are not yet in the mode of pure goodness. We have to come to the mode of goodness. We have to become more focused on the mode of goodness and get rid of the passion in ignorance. <laughs> Right? The, the mode of passion means you get angry and you speak nasty, harsh words to each other, arguing, quarreling. The mode of ignorance, we sleep a lot, we're very lazy, we're dirty. Sometimes we chant, sometimes we don't chant, sometimes they're chanting not very good. No, sometimes we're, 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 we chant, we go to sleep, sometimes we're not, we're not paying attention when we hear the classes. So we have to come more to the mode of goodness. And then from the mode of goodness, then you can come to the level of pure goodness, like Prahlad. 
रजगुण रमगुण देखि माथि दूर भाई सत्व गुण में लियां पर्च अज हम शुद्ध सत्व में लियां प्रयास कर Prahlad Maharaj is a prema bhakta. He has love of God. He sees God everywhere. But if you want to, if we want to come up to that level, first we have to come to the mode of goodness. Then from the mode of goodness, then you have to come to the transcendental platform, to pure goodness. When you get rid of all the passion and ignorance. Then we have to go on from pure goodness, you have to go on to develop brain, to develop love for God. So there's different stages in practicing devotional service. Until we get rid of all the passion and ignorance, we're still doing anartha nevriti. Anartha nevriti is where you remove the passion and ignorance. Then after anartha nivritti, then comes nishta. You're very fixed and very steady, very regular. You do your do all the seva very regular. Then ruchi comes, you get more taste for the chanting, you get more taste for devotional service. And then after, after ruchi then comes asakti, where we become detached from all the material things. We, we don't even think about the material things anymore. And then comes bhava. Bhava is a preliminary stage before prema. Right? Bhava means the ecstasy, devotional service and ecstasy. You want ecstasy? You want to experience ecstasy? We have to go through all these other levels to come to to come to Bhava and then from Bhava then you get Prima. So Prahlad Maharaj is a very, very special devotee. He's a prima bhakta. He has love of God. He sees God everywhere. We're just neophytes. We're still struggling, trying to become devotees. Prabhupada would say to be a devotee is not an easy thing. We have to practice, we have to cultivate the qualities. Okay, Hare Krishna. Any other question? Yes. Okay, Hare Krishna. Okay. Srila Thank you, Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada ki.
Got back to Brinda Ki. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.